lot to keep up with. I did see that rivals Rob Cassidy made mention of a couple of guys yesterday as well. But have you uh, kept up with any of it with in uh, your capacity? You know, I'm trying to like that's <laughs> that's uh, that's that's part of uh, this this time of the year is that you're trying to follow everyone who is who's playing, who's gotten offers, who's looking to get an offer, who is trending which direction. So as we're kind of winding down with the transfer portal here, this is now kind of when high school recruiting is really heating up. Um, and, and so that's kind of the the time of year that we're entering is the time where uh, that takes center stage. And so, yeah, it, it's it's been uh, I, I wasn't able to get to the uh, the, the Memorial Run and Slam uh, over the weekend, unfortunately, which is the first time in several years that I have not been able to be there. I was out of town this weekend. So um, but I did hear, of course, uh, that can that it went well. It's the big showcase here in Fort Wayne um, for the EYBL. So um, plenty of talented players there as well. And so just, yeah, try to try it again. Once you get out of portal recruiting, which was a, a thousand names to keep up with, and there's still some portal recruiting going on, but uh, a thousand names to keep up with. Now you're trying to keep up with the uh, the 500 names that uh, P, that are in play for that as well. So it's always interesting. So uh, that the run and slam already happened. Yes, that was this weekend. The, 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 um, the Memorial run and slam, it was this past weekend in Fort Wayne. Yeah, there's uh there was act see um, no there was the AAU circuit. They were down in uh, Alabama last weekend, but in Indianapolis this weekend, as a matter of fact, speaking of which, Indiana Elite for that matter, if you want to go see them play, they're only going to play on Saturday because they are leaving for Bryan, Texas, uh where they play next week. Man, they're all it, it is they call it the three SSP circuit. It is exactly that a circuit. I mean, you are going out and there, they played five tough games in Birmingham last week. Now they'll be heading down to uh, Bryan, Texas after this weekend uh, playing in Indianapolis, they'll play games, two games back to back. I mean, right after the other and then head to Bryan, Texas, where they'll play a ton of great talent right now. Indiana Elite is uh, thirteen and zero. Talk about a loaded team. You start with Braylon Mullins at uh, shooting guard, and I, I need to get. Uh, I like to find um, the uh, post by that was made by Rob Cassidy. I'll get that pulled up on what he said. But there are Indiana has really done both now. Mike Woodson has done to me a 180 in recruiting. He the portal was a different situation where they just mined the portal and they pulled out a hell of a, a, a haul. But at the same time, they seem recommitted to overall recruiting. You know, you saw the entire staff out at uh seeing Trent Sisley, Jeremy or uh, uh Braylon Mullins, um Someone else I can't remember. They, they were out to see Jalen Harrelson a couple of weeks ago. Jalen Harrelson as well, uh, but it's you can see they're they're, they're not the portal is kind of winding down, but they're they're rolling into regular recruiting now, which haven't seen that much of to be honest with you. Yeah, no, absolutely. And like that, this is what I said in in January, February, right? It was like the once. Once Derek Queen committed to Maryland, once Boogie Flan committed to Kentucky, uh, even before McNeely decommitted, it was kind of like, okay, the, the way Mike Woodson set this up did not work, right? And 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 that's I think that was it was fair fair to say that. And so I think there were there were some calls for like, okay, he 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 doesn't want to do recruiting um, the, the way it should be done. I, I think it was more that he had a strategy, and it didn't work. And so I think at that point it's like, okay, can you adjust? Right. Or are you just going to keep trying to do the same thing that didn't work the previous time? Uh, and I think he's adjusted now. I think that what the portal was this offseason was a way to bridge into a new recruiting strategy for high schools, which you can do that without bottoming out for a year because you have the portal. Right. And, and so I think that that's what that does is, is it saves you. Can, you can kind of kind of change high school strat, high school recruiting strategies on the fly. 
um, and and not have to go through kind of a, a, an awful next season because you were able to reinforce through the portal. And, and what I'll say is, and I said this at the beginning of the portal recruiting cycle as well, is that if I, I, you can build through the portal at least to a certain extent. That I know that the conventional wisdom is you you get you just get portal guys to kind of shore up weak spots, but you can build through the portal if you get guys who are going to be around for a little bit. And I think he did that as well. Like getting Miles Rice and getting Kane and Carlisle, those are guys who are going to be around for two or three years. Um, and so that's kind of high school. That's basically high school recruiting by another name, right? That's that's getting guys who are going to be foundational pillars of your program. And, and and so they did that, and now they're trying to, to change their strategy in high school recruiting. And I think what the portal does, like I said, is, is build a bridge to the future without making you bottom out. And I compared it at the time. So Matt Painter at Purdue, he had that those really good teams with Robbie Hummel and Etwan Moore and Jawan Johnson early in his tenure, the baby boilers teams. And then he and he he has admitted this himself, is that he kind of got a little bit too focused on, on uh, trying to get high level recruits. Uh, it didn't work. He, he, he wasn't recruiting the kind of guys that he wanted. And there were several, several years there where the teams just didn't fit well together. And so what he did was he changed his recruiting strategy. And what, and what happened was they, they were, there were two years there where they missed the tournament entirely and just weren't very good. And there was some, there was some heat on him at that point. Remember he almost, he, he, he considered going to Missouri. Um, he th there were some people calling for his job, and, and what happened was Purdue was patient and allowed him to change his recruiting strategy, allowed him to go through that down period, um, and, and kind of come out on the other side. And so now he you you see what he's done, which is um, he now has an, a, a type of guy that he wants to bring in, and it fits his system. And I think what we're seeing is Mike Woodson is making that change. And it, it's allowing Indiana allowed him to the time to make that change, and I think that, and I think that that is is what we're seeing now is that he's making that change. And I think that that that's kind of really interesting to follow here is how that works. Is it going to work better? I don't know, but it's definitely going to be different than what we saw last year. Yeah, I want to follow up on that, but before I do, speaking of change, uh, Dylan is married now. Uh, I forgot about that. Uh, so, I, do I do I call you Mister Dylan? That's right. I, I, I'm Stop. saying, should I call for uh, for future reference? Should I well, call you Mister Dylan? Ah, uh, uh, having a okay. little issue Stop. there. But uh, we'll get sure. Dylan to uh, reconnect. He's having a problem there, and we'll get him reconnected. But uh, I do want to follow up on that because IU had not done a, a very good job recruiting the state. Uh, I mean, I'm not telling anybody anything that no one knows. It was kind of wonky. I, part of it is because I think Woodson came in and just really didn't understand recruiting, uh, didn't understand much because he had Trace Jackson Davis. And so then uh, the things started changing. And then so they went to Montverde and got Jalen Huchifino and added to that. And so it looked like all was good and, and, and there were recruits coming in from the previous regime, uh, Gabe Cups. And so, but it was not, looked upon like it is now dylan i'm i'm talking about that i you didn't do a great job recruiting in the beginning yeah. and but they they quick I, I think that finally after last year it was made known to them it came crashing home that hey this you know this is not how you do things and then hitting the portal like they did they had to do that because they were behind on recruiting so and that's actually an okay thing because you used the word bridge a minute ago. That's what this is. This is a bridge that, that in my opinion, will allow them in the future to do both, which is what you're going to have to do. You're going to see this happen at Purdue. I know you're not seeing it right now, but that's just because they're going to hit their time. And I think that they're going to be behind when it happens. And it could start, it, I think it'll start happening next year. You got six new guys coming in. There is no way in hell that all six guys are staying. 
but we shall see uh, because Matt has done a hell of a job of keeping guys. I mean, you want to talk about a, an impossibility. How in the hell do you keep guys in this day and age? And he did it in a, but I'll tell you why and how you have a team that, that thinks they have a shot at winning the national championship. And with Zach Eady, Purdue did. That's not there anymore. With that gone, I think that after next season, there will be a couple of guys that leave Purdue. Um, uh, and I'll say, I've said this a bunch. Holy crap. I, I, I'd have told one of those kids to go to uh, uh, prep school or something just to keep Mason Gillis. He was a six man of the year, for God's sake, in the Big Ten. But nope. Uh, but uh, anyway. But IU has put themselves in a position to where they can get the best, best of both worlds now. Next year, with this class that they're chasing, uh, Braylon Mullins, who uh, this from Rob Cassidy, rivals national recruiting director. Mullins isn't an, an unknown commodity by any stretch, but his current ranking of 88 feels a touch low after his last weekend that saw the six foot five guard consistently impact games in a long list of ways. Sunday saw the junior stand toe to toe with a talented uh, ASAK squad and finished the game with 17, four rebounds, four assists going seven of 13 from the field. He still needs to fill out from a muscle standpoint. And I've talked about that, but he's deceptive. Uh, he's very, very wire lanky. But his jumper efficiency and ability to see the floor are striking. He averaged 20 points, two and a half assists for his uh, Indiana Elite team over the course of those five games last weekend and uh, helped his squad go to an undefeated weekend, which is, is an accomplishment. Mullins is playing like a top 50 talent and could see his stock rise even higher by the time all is said and done. Uh, the Indiana-based Mullins is a priority target for both Indiana and Purdue. I don't know about that. I don't know that he's a prime target for Purdue because Purdue right now is already one over. So they're one over the limit at the moment. Now somebody else has to go. And then next year they're recruiting also his teammate, Trent Sisley. I think they only have room for one person next year, maybe. Um, yeah, next year is going to be so. Purdue is in a really interesting spot right now. So they basically have very, very few seniors. They, 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 obviously, there there are Caleb First is going is going to be a senior next year, so he will be gone after next next season. Um, but beyond that, I, I I'm 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 trying to think of the roster off the top of my head right now. But I, I they, they don't have that many guys leaving after next year necessarily, right? There are a lot of guys who are going to be like redshirt juniors next or red, redshirt juniors next season and, and, and below. And, and so you're you're gonna have a, a pretty packed roster. And I want to go back to what you were saying earlier about how it, how Purdue is gonna have to go go to the portal eventually. And they have already. They brought in Lance Jones. They they they, they know that. But I want one of the one of the most interesting things that, that Matt Painter said during the NCAA tournament um, was that he knows it's going to catch up to them. Like he he's pretty sure it's going to catch up to them at some point and they're going to have to go through the portal. I think this was almost the, the, the six man recruiting class that he brought in was almost kind of his, his last gasp at trying to do things exactly the way he wants to do them and bring in guys that exactly fit. And obviously, by the way, Lance Jones was a great fit for them. Like, so you can find guys who fit, through the portal like he was Purdue guy through and through he could not have been happier to be a boilermaker and he fit their culture really really well as you can find those guys through the portal it's a question of can you find four or five of them through the portal and I think that that's what's going to be more difficult so I I, I I think you're right I do think that Purdue is going to have to hit the portal here going forward and I think that Matt Painter knows that he's kind of bracing for it even though he would rather really really stick with high school recruiting but yeah I, I don't know exactly how many how many spaces they're going to have after next season. There's not a whole lot of guys who are even moving on at the end of next year. So, um, and, and by the way, I should say about, about Mason Gillis, I, I do think that he was, he was kind of the way I think basically what happened was as far as I can tell, there, there was discussions with him, with Zach Eady, with Ethan Morton, basically saying, are you staying? Or are you going at the end of the year? 
and he ba- and they basically kind of made it known that they were moving on. And so that was why Matt Painter brought in that class was like, well, we know we're going to have these guys, these roster spots available. So I think it was less of a running off and more of a it's t- it, it, it's a moving on situation. Uh, and, and so I do think that that's kind of that. I don't, I don't think you run off a sixth man of the year. Hello, everybody. Jim Coyle of Indiana Sports Beat Radio. Thank you for enjoying our content and videos. And make sure you hit that subscribe and notifications toggle so you don't miss out on anything, whether it's Indiana Hoosiers, the Boilers, the Colts, the Pacers, Indiana High School action, whatever is happening in sports, we're trying to bring it all to you. And make sure you don't miss out on a thing. Again, hit the subscribe button for us. Helps us out a ton. We appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much.